Hello my Soccer Universe to the weekly, however not quite complete, Serie review. Thanks to the completely unnecessary Super Cup competition in Saudi Arabia, the Serie decided to stretch this round up until Tuesday, which does not quite comply with my schedule. So, we'll not be talking about Juve Sassuolo, this will probably be in the next video or on a short video that will talk about that result. Should there anything remarkable be happening however uh you know super copa aside again like in spain i will not watch i will not care about this competition at all uh it's for me a made-up competition and a necessary con competition uh it should be a pre-season stuff and to talk about it off, it's not even held in italy so uh everything wrong with that one already enough on the Supercoppa. Um, the round actually here uh, that we had was quite an interesting one. Uh, we got a pretty big Milan win, which makes me happy, although I'm still bitter about the Coppa Italia loss. Uh, we had an even bigger Inter win and Lautaro Martinez is now on, I think, 18 goals in the league and 20 overall. Uh, really, really impressive stuff. And that's at the halfway point of the season. So uh, don't discount that the, uh, he is among the best strikers in Europe. Uh, at this very moment, uh, we had an equally big uh, win yesterday by Atalanta, uh, who, despite missing uh, kind of like Adam Ola Lukman and so on from the AF AFCON, find themselves in a really, really good form. And yeah, we also had a very late win for Napoli. Napoli can win! Napoli can win! If that's not something to talk about, I well, during the editing, the word came out from Rome that Jose Mourinho's era at Roma has ended effective immediately, which I think is quite an interesting turn of events given how popular Mourinho still was with the fan base. I totally can understand that. Uh, I think especially his behavior as of late was pointing towards a sack and he still wanting to kind of convince the fan base he wants to be at Roma, but I think Roma want to look somewhere else. Personally, I was never on board with Mourinho at Roma. Uh, yes, he had success. He brought them a Conference League title. He almost won the Europa League last season in the league. He did not bring them Champions League, so this was a major downer already. And I have to say that the style of play was also not what Roma fans would expect and hope for. So let's see who comes next. According to Fabrizio Romano, the obvious candidate to replace it is Roma legend Daniele De Rossi, which might placate a fan base that might be in uproar. But yeah, Jose Mourinho out of Serie A. Serie A will probably be a little bit poorer for it. On the other side, I hope that Roma will return to a little bit more normalcy overall and that there will be some better football being played in Rome. And I want to return to being majorly following Roma and being happy to watch Roma games as I have been as of late. But now back to the original video where I did not know yet that Mourinho was sacked. I would say we'll run through the games that have been happening. We had a nil-nil between Genoa and Torino. I didn't watch and I'm happy I did not. It is kind of uh, typically mid-table stuff. Genoa actually pretty good this season and Torino are also solid but not exceptional. I don't think that Torino will be able to push uh, for Europe. And then we're already at Na Napoli who did not play well. Really did not play well. But they get a win against dead last Salernitana. Uh, thanks to the uh, Kandreev, of course, gives Salernitana the, the, the lead. And, you know, people in Zagia, a player I really liked, um, is now the coach of South Salernitana. Napoli can equalize through a late Politano penalty in the first half. And then Rachman, the ball in deepness of it falls to Rachman. It was more or less a random product he puts it in the net and Napoli are celebrating almost like they are champions almost almost um, it is a win I think this is all that counted for now but it's not one that fills me with a lot of confidence uh, it might be no Europe for Napoli this season especially if they keep up these bad performances um, then and there were a couple of uh, results uh, in the relegation battle that could prove decisive. Verona get a win over Empoli. Yes, Empoli are also down there in the bottom with Salernitana, but this was a huge win for Verona uh, in their 
fight for survival. Uh, winning 2 0, Juric and Gonsch headed early on. Zurgovski pulls one back in the 664th, but those are vital three points. It may lead to survival for Ellis one more time. And then, in the, I mean, I personally had some hope that maybe, maybe, just maybe, Monza can do something against Inter. No, there, there was never even a, a thought about that. Uh, Cialnogo penalty in the 12th, 12th minute, and Lautaro, uh, after Di Marco sees in the 14th, had already the game fully decided. Inter could cruise this time. There was no bubble happening. Uh, yeah, there was a Piscina goal, it was offside. Uh, but right after half, Cialnogo makes it 3 3 nil, and then whatever happened right there, thereafter. Uh, was just stats padding in a way, so Pessina converts a penalty. Lautaro also gets a penalty, so this was the third penalty because Cialanogli had already been off. And Marcus Thuram also adds uh, to his tally. Thuram, probably one of the signings of the season, and his partnership with Lautaro Martinez really, really elevated Inter. And as I said, in this form, it's really hard to see anyone else but Inter winning that title. Uh, Lazio get kind of a hard fought win uh, over Let Lecce. It's uh, through a Felipe Anderson goal. Lecce at the moment looking kind of safeish, but I think they could be dragged in there as well. So let's see where this is going. Then uh, Bologna's run, it's, it runs a bit of Villa, but worse than Villa in a, in a, in a sense. Bologna had this great run where they're beating all these uh, great opponents. And now they're losing to Cagliari. Again, uh, points dropped and I think their top four push probably ends right there. Orsolini gave them the lead, however, Petania uh, shortly after gets and equals and Calafiori on goal decides it for Cagliari. Like for Verona, probably even bigger for Verona. This is huge three points for Cal Cal Cagliari under, of course, Claudio Ra Ranieri. They actually, if they keep up the home form, they actually have a good shot of surviving uh, in the Serie A, uh, I would say. So a uh, really, really big win. It At the moment, it really looks like a uh, duel between Cagliari and uh, Elas Verona, although, you know, there are a few that might be pulled in, like Frosinone, uh, potentially Udine and Lecce uh, as well. So we we we, 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 we got to see, but it's always around this time of the year that suddenly the sides of the bottom start winning. And if they gain enough momentum, they actually could. So, wife. Uh, Fiorentina, yes, they went through in the Copa, but Fiorentina also. I know they're going now to Saudi Arabia, blah, blah, also no more outlook. All right. Ud Udine earning the two points. Twice having lead through Lovic and Lovric and Tovin. Uh, Beltran Zola with a penalty late. Um, get the equalizer for, for Fiorentina, but on the, honestly, Fiorentina, Fiorentina, I think this is also a team that has a lot of uh, potential, have a great coach, but the pieces are missing. If they, if they would have uh, better markets and a better squad, I think this is a team that could actually achieve quite something. Well, let's talk about the highlight for me, for, for example, which was Milan Roma. Uh, to be honest, going into it, I did not expect much because I know how Roma are playing. Uh, but to the credit, Roma came out flying and really attacking Milan. Um, and so for the first five, six, six minutes, I said, oh, you've got to be careful because the partnership on the back, Gabia and Kier, I don't quite trust. However, M Milan are better at the same game. So it was very little time played uh, in the midfield. It was going to the left, to the right, back and forth. And once Adli in the 11th minute gave Milan the lead, uh, this a uh, calmed down the game, but then Milan were also in full control of that game. Uh, I'm very happy for Adli to finally get his first goal for, for Milan. You could see in his uh, celebration was really, really relieved uh, that he actually did something for this club because he has been a little bit of uh, the butt of all jokes, uh, especially in the last season. Uh, the way he took his goal was also quite excellent, looking at taking a cool shot. My only complaint for the longest of times uh, was that Milan did not double their lead. Uh, there were again a few Leao runs where I think, yes, there is a good thought behind it, but then the final pass was always missing. Uh, sometimes the one-twos, there was always a player, if you do a little bit faster or you play a little bit sooner or you take the risk a little bit sooner, I think you could have made the 2 nil. Yes, the 2 2 nil came then, come, come, comes then uh, with Giroud heading it from short distance, uh, although there was probably a push away as well. But with 2 nil, the game seemed 
seemed more or less done because at that point Roma was non-existent anymore. But this Roma is a really, really, really curious site. Yes, they brought on Pellegrini, which is probably one of their creative sparks. And I don't understand why Pellegrini is not playing on a more regular basis. But they also earned themselves a penalty. A uh, total 100% This was not a contentious one. It was 100% a penalty. And Paredes do this lost at home. And then Mike Menio quickly grabbing the ball and kind of antagonizing there, which he has the right to the ball. And, you know... This Paredes guy is always a uh, walking red card. I really don't like that player too. To be I would not have, want to have it for my team, nor for, for the opponent. Uh, he's just mental, to be honest. And then I think for the next 10 minutes, out of nowhere, suddenly the holder play with Lukaku is working. Uh, Roma is actually creating some chances. Nothing great. I mean, there was a good uh, Lorenzo Pellegrini uh, free kick in there. The fourth fortune got deflected, I think, by Giroud to a corner. Because that would have probably hit right in the top of, of that with no chance for Menor. But Milan again, uh, bringing up uh, Okafor and Musa, uh, and Musa. I was not happy of being taken off because he probably thought, oh, there's ample space where I can score in. Yeah, but you have also been quite wasteful too, to where so I actually understood that. But then um, Hernandez makes one, one, one of the runs. One to which Giroud, Giroud back heels it into his part and a wonderful shot on the side of the cross, cross point in. It was a really brilliant goal, I have to say. Makes it 3-1, that sells the game. I mean, Roma could have made it probably 3-2 overall, but I was then quite pleased uh, with the overall performance. Milan win the big one. Uh, and with all the other results falling this uh, their way, um, meaning in the top four battle, uh, they have now a real good cushion on fifth place. There's nine nine points ahead, there are eight points ahead of Fiorentina. So Champions League is all but secured at this point you know, of, the, of of the, of the season now. You can probably focus a teeny bit more, maybe on the Europa League, or maybe uh, even try a title push and test. The other two, although it's a long, 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 long way out that also has, has what to say. Did not see anything from the game yesterday, yesterday but after f because I saw that after 50 minutes when I was about to check, <laughs> Atalanta already 3 0 lead. Cope minus with a penalty. He's in really good form. Ederson and De Catalare uh, assisted by Theron. This uh, Benelux connection for Atalanta uh, is scary at, 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 at the moment, and if you ask me, like a two weeks ago, I would have said Bologna is going to be fourth. At the moment, I'm saying Atalanta. However, I one should not overlook Lazio either because they have actually putting it, it, it in to get a nice run as well. Uh, Sapa Costa and Holm uh, do a score two, 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 two late dead goals to make it a really, really big scoreline. I think Atalanta are feeling themselves at the moment. I, I think they can make a push, but you're never quite that certain with Atalanta to be honest. Now, if you look for the next round, due to the Supercopa, uh, there are four games that have been postponed, unlike Spain, where they at least have one duel in there. It's four different ones that have been postponed, so it's a very rump round. So I'm not 100% whether I will do a Serie A review video next week. It might be in two weeks, just a heads up for that. Um, the big name teams, Roma play at home to Elas and Udine host Milan. So those are the two on Saturday. Uh, we also have Lecce against Juve, uh, potential banana skin. Uh, and then, you know, Cagliari, if they get something for Rosinone, they pull for Rosinone into uh, the relegation battle as well. Um, I think the other ones, Sanitana and Ampli, have home games against mid-table teams where I think this will be rough for them. So that was it from me from Serie A for this week. As I said, I may take a break for next week for Serie A because, you know, FCON and the Asian Cup is going on. But let's see. If something remarkable happens, I'll be happily making a video. Otherwise, you'll get a short next week and we'll then take it from there. In any case, give me, let, let me know what you thought about the action in Serie A. Give me a thumbs up. Enjoyed this video and I'll talk to you soon about more in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!